Hello, welcome to the Automated Tester. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at what is perhaps the most important network or communication protocol our world has ever seen, HTTP. We'll take a quick look at what it is, how it works, and the important role it plays for us in automated testing. Let's begin. HTTP, or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is an application protocol for distributed collaborative hypermedia information systems. In other words, it's the protocol that really enables the web. You see, every time you click on a link or type HTTP something into your browser, magical things start to happen. First, something takes that thing you typed in, something we call a URL, and converts it into what we call an IP address. IP addresses are like unique mailboxes on the internet. They're what tell your browser where to download and get that funny cat video from. And with that IP address in hand, your browser is then able to make what we call an HTTP request. This request, which is usually for all the text and pictures that show up in your browser, is then sent to a server which serves back a response containing everything you're looking for. And voila, that's how you get your web page. Now what's magical about all this is how much information gets packed into that thing we call a URL or a uniform resource locator. A URL is made up of a protocol. And in this case for us, it's always gonna be HTTP. The IP address or the unique address of the server and where it lives on the web. A port number, which you can think of like a listening channel at the server that speaks HTTP to take those incoming requests in and the resource of the thing we're looking for, i.e. an HTML page of, or a picture or a GIF. And it's this combination of HTTP and URL that makes the web work. Let's see now how we can use these things in automated testing. HTTP plays a big role in automated testing because whenever we need to test our web services, HTTP and URLs are how we do it. For example, if we wanted to test the login service for our website, we could do it like this. First, we need to script and get the login page that we need to navigate our testing framework to. Then we would need to script an HTTP post to send the credentials for logging in. We would then need to follow the redirect to wherever the web service wanted to send us. And then finally, we could check to see that we've ended up in the right place by verifying something on the page, something like the presence of an H1 header. That test that would combine all those HTTP requests would look something like this. Those words, get and post, are what we call HTTP verbs. They are a core part of the HTTP protocol, and that's why you'll see them used and described in some automation testing frameworks. Get login path is the equivalent of you typing in this URL into your browser and hitting enter. This test, written in Ruby on Rails, handles some of the magic of converting that word login path into localhost 3000 login, in other words, our URL. And that get word is the framework telling us, or us telling the framework, we'd like to do an HTTP get. Post is the exact same, only here we are posting. Post login path session is the equivalent of you filling out that login form and then clicking the sign in button. I should be clear, it's the HTTP equivalent of you doing that. We're not actually going through the UI. And it's HTTP gets and posts that enable us to script and automate these tests in HTTP. And that's why having a basic understanding of them and how they work is what really enables us to write integration tests and test our underlying web services. And so long as you understand that what we're really doing here is using HTTP along with URLs to drive our automated tests, you've got it. You already know more than most people do about how the web works and certainly know more than most about how to test it. So in summary, HTTP is the protocol we use in writing automated tests for the web. URLs are how we tell our test frameworks where we'd like them to go. 
And by combining them, we can pretty much automate or script anything we want for when it comes to testing our web services. Okay, that's a good start for learning some of the basics about HTTP. Keep exploring, keep reading, and until next time, happy testing.